So we're going to use the scan tool to see readiness status. And we're gonna check the readiness status after a code has been cleared and see if it's ready for emission testing. Um, after that, we're going to read a code, clear a code, and then we're going to use live data. So we're gonna show you the functions of this OTC Evo Genesis scan tool. So this is a OBD2 onboard diagnostic two connector. This is located underneath the driver's side of the dash. And we just plug this in. And next, before we enter, we're going to turn that key on engine off where all of the accessory lights are on. Keep going where it's showing all of the lights on the dash. You'll hear it usually beep. And we go enter and you can go through and select your make model. We're gonna keep this simple for readiness status. So we're going into global OBD2 and it may take a minute to upload. So I'm gonna to try to get this a little closer for you to see. So once the key is on, once that's plugged in, it's communicating. It may tell us to please wait. It's not gonna be really fast. We've used this adapter, which we already have plugged in, and now it's gonna go through and check um, the test real quick to make sure it's compatible with the system. The quick test results tells me the readiness test, which is mode one. You can see comprehensive uh, compression, fuel system, misfire monitor, the oxygen sensor is not ready. The oxygen sensor heater is not ready. The Cadillac um, catalyst is not ready. EVAP system not, EGR ready, and then secondary system, which is air injection is ready. For emission purposes, we need to have one not ready. If we have more than one not ready, then we have to drive it around to get everything ready again. So anytime a car has a check engine light, somebody has cleared it, it's reset these monitors where they're not ready and then we have to drive it around for 50 to 200 miles. And we have to go through engine cycles on and off to get everything ready. Some emission tests require all of these to be ready before it goes in for emissions. So just to go through how we got there, we're going to push the exit and we're going to go back here to OBD2, that generic OBD2 menu at the very first and then right here. And then we just simply let it load and go to the readiness monitors. I want to know what is ready, what is not ready for the purpose of your lab. So now we're going to go into the code reading. So code reading, after we went through this, it will automatically go to our readiness um, status again. We will back up and then we'll go into reading codes. So again, there's our readiness monitors exit and you can see diagnostic trouble codes modes two three four and seven so we just highlight that and we go enter and then we're going to read the code and we hit enter and this establishes a connection to see what code is on this car so exhaust gas recirculation sensor a circuit is low so this is why it's not passing emissions after I fix this problem I simply exit out and I can clear the code so if I clear this code it will go through and it'll ask me if I want to you see these little lines here with little arrows these represent these keys right here so I just go yes, and it will go through, and it tells me it's cleared and it's okay. 
Now if I go into reading the code again, okay, it says that everything's passed. But if it failed on my drive cycle, then I would have to go through and troubleshoot it again and fix it. So after I fix the car, the check engine light is, is uh, verified. I can then exit back. And the data stream is just a generic data stream. So this is where I would finish my lab going into um, the different sensors and actuators. So we have throttle position. You can see there's no data, but after I give it a second, it changed. There's now a value and a percentage. So I'm going to record all of these sensor datas as I go through this on my worksheet. And I'm going to write as it goes from no data to what it says. And I have to be patient with it with the key on engine off. Now, when I start the car, these values are going to change. So I'm going to go ahead and start the car and you will see, we'll go to um, engine coolant temp. Once I start the car at idle, we'll go ahead and do that because the RPM will change from zero to idle. Once we wait for it, you can see the RPM went up and now as the engine warms up, that coolant temperature will go up in value. So as I wait for it, to warm up and I run it at idle, these values will balance out according to what it is at idle. Next, I'm going to finish my lab and I'm going to give it 2000 RPMs. So when I increase the RPMs to 2000, my values will change. So let's look at throttle position. It's at zero. But when I give it gas, and I push on the gas, you will see that it goes up in a percentage. We'll go ahead and push on the gas. See how it went up to two? We're about 2,300 RPMs. We'll go up to about 3,000 RPMs. And you can see that throttle position changes. So we know that sensor is working. Okay, we'll go back to idle again. And when we go back to idle, it drops to zero after we let off the gas. So all of these sensors we can see based upon what the scan tool is telling us with what the car is seeing. The sensors report to the computer the computer then will tell us what's happening with the mass airflow sensor when it's idling. When I give it gas, you'll watch that change. Let's go ahead and give it some gas again. The mass up, the, the map sensor. See how it's changing value when I give it gas? Then when I let off the gas pedal, then it will drop again. Or when I turn the key off, engine on, key on, key on engine off, you'll see the date, go one more click, okay? The data will then populate back to a different value. So technicians use the data to help diagnose what is wrong with the car to determine what they need to do to fix the car. So this lab, we want you to gather data. We want you to go in and experiment with the scan tool. Um, we want you to get readiness status and pull a code. The last thing, if you want um, to go into the year make model and see other modules other than just the engine data, we go all the way back to the original screen.
and we're going to go to domestic so go enter and then the manufacturer this is a saturn so we're going to select that and then we need to know the year the model and the engine size we gather that information off of the vin so the vehicle identification number, I can go off of that to populate the other modules. If I wanna see more than the engine, maybe I want to use the scan tool to check ABS. So we're gonna go into 2000. This is a 2001 off of the VIN number. And then um, this is a Z and you can see these are all of the different modules that I can communicate with. So the engine gave me the data we did. The global, you can choose that. There's transmission, we'll go into brakes. So the brakes tells us to use the same connector and now we can go in and see why the ABS light is on, for example. So we would see diagnostic trouble codes and we could even go down if there's a data menu or special functions. Let's back out here. Let's try the transmission. This is a 1.97. Some of the older cars, we may only be able to use OBD2 generic but we'll go into diagnostic trouble codes, see if there's any current codes, and it will load through and see, and there's actually, it shows our exhaust gas recirculation code in our transmission, which would affect the shifting points too. Okay, so you can go in and kind of play with this. There's data stream, this is all the stuff um, relating to inputs, outputs of the transmission, and we can see what it populates in terms of vehicle speed. Of course, it's not being drove down the road, but it would give us a miles per hour. Okay, so experiment, play with this. We want you to use it um, to power it down. We just simply push the power button it says that if it doesn't shut down within 10 seconds, we hit the enter and hold it. And we simply unplug the scan tool from underneath the dash. And then we turn that ignition off and make sure that the battery's not dead for the next group.